So I've been very excited about this project since Henry first proposed it to me several years ago. And I think what he's really pulled off here has been the perfect marriage between the public works, humanities, and physical fitness. So it's all here on this trail. As everybody knows, I'm a historian by trade. I teach history, I read it, I study it, I write about it, I drive my relatives and friends crazy with it, I go to bed with it, I make my wife jealous with it. Um, it's fair to say that I love history, and yet I don't really think most people truly know what it is. As I tell students, history is really not about names and dates. Those things are important and you need to know them, but they're important for the context that they provide. I really think that history is about a way of seeing. It's a way of getting beyond this human tendency to kind of see everything like a postcard, like a flashpoint in time. Historians are a lot like geologists and evolutionary biologists. We're used to seeing the water as it flows through the river we tend to see the world in a constant state of transformation. So what I see as I look around here at this landscape, I see something that was transformed to accommodate 20th century technology. These buildings, this highway, these parking lots, even these trees. Johnson County may be one of the few places in the world that has more trees now than it did in the 19th century. All of these were created to serve the interests of people at a particular point in time. So the historian in me thinks back to what this must have looked like long ago when this was still prairie. Back to a time when early indigenous people lived here, people who were here centuries ago, millennia ago. Individuals and communities whose names have not been recorded, who are lost to us. Seeing this particular spot that way, I think gives me a little insight onto how it may look in the future. And while I don't exactly know what that's going to look like, I'm pretty sure it's not going to look anything like what we're seeing right now. So history in a lot of ways is a, sorry, vain and futile attempt by human beings to see some kind of permanence in the past. A way of looking backward, a way of looking for some thread of continuity that assures us that nothing ever really changes. And the purpose of historical commemoration, which is really what this is, is to write ourselves into that narrative, to try to ensure that future generations are going to remember our achievements and our successes, because we don't want to be erased or forgotten. And we do that through stories, right? And what we've got here is a panel that tells a story about community leaders who had a vision, who had resources, who created an institution and renamed that boulevard accordingly. So it's right that we tell the story of people like Will Billington and Virginia Krebs, that's important. But I tell students this too, history is rarely about the deeds of great men. In fact, it's rarely, in fact, it's never about the deeds of great men. It's really about the collective efforts of people, traditions, sometimes even forces of nature that move us forward. For every narrative like this, which is a success story, and we know it's a success because JCCC and College Boulevard are still here and doing pretty well after half a century. For every story like this, there are a whole lot of other stories that were started by people with the same vision, with equally strong resources. And yet, those stories aren't here anymore. There are many stories about other colleges, churches, banks, businesses, towns, all started by people like this, and yet they've today been forgotten, except by history nerds like myself. So why? Now what's different about this story that makes it unique? For me, the answer resides in the people who are seldom mentioned. Johnson County Community College has been a success because of the thousands of staff who have worked there over time. These are the people who serve the food, maintain the facilities, answer the phones, pay the bills. These are the administrators who make and have to own the difficult decisions about the college's future. It's about the faculty who obtain their degrees at faraway places, the artists, the playwrights, the authors, the social scientists, 
who choose to come here and make this their home and contribute something to the intellectual climate of the community and in the process have earned the respect of the nation's top universities. It's also about the millions of students, parents, and taxpayers who see it as in their best interests and wisely recognize the need for a first-rate educational institution right here on their doorstep. So to me, what makes this story unique is that it is the community which sustains the college. Without education, a community loses its vitality, and it fails. And a school cannot succeed without the support of the community. They need each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. You know, it wasn't very long ago when calling yourself a Johnson Countyan didn't say very much about you. Um, political scientists say that the whole idea of the county is kind of an outdated model. Most of us probably don't think of ourselves as members of a ward or a district or a township. And I dare say when this was all put here back in the 1960s, Johnson County was nothing more to most people than a few lines on a map of Kansas. Fifty years ago, Johnson County residents didn't think of themselves that way. They thought of themselves as from o Overland Park, or you're from Olathe, or you're from Shawnee, or you're from Leawood. And that's like most of Kansas. People have an identity that's attached to their small town, to their municipality. And you still see traces of that today. But I think that's changing. That, I, that I'm aware of, there are only two institutions that give Johnson Countyans a shared sense of purpose. One is the county government, and the other is JCCC. And I'd like to think we have more oomph than the county government. We're only one of two broad bodies in which all of Johnson County can take pride. And so in that sense, JCCC has not only served the wider community, but it has been instrumental in creating it. So I'm proud to dedicate this panel on behalf of all who've been a transformative force. I'd like to think it's going to be here 100 years from now. I'm not naive enough to think it's going to be here in 200. Future generations are going to do with this landscape whatever their current interests decide, just like we have done. And they're gonna take their own lessons from the past no matter what we try to convey to them. But I think it's more than enough to say for the here and now, this is us, this is our achievement, this is our success, this is something we take pride in. And we hope you'll remember. Thank you.